This video will demonstrate our own model to test the critical tape theory of D. Davis. We'll start with a brief introduction to the theory, followed by the method, result, conclusion, and discussion. The introduction. Critical taper theory of fault truss belt mechanics is introduced in 1983 by D. Davis, and is as follows. The critical taper, or in this figure, phi critical, is defined as the sum of the surface slope angle alpha and the attachment slope angle beta. When the wedge reaches a certain critical taper angle, the wedge as a whole slides toward the forelimb along the weak detachment, like in figure A. Slip occurs on the detachment because the coefficient of sliding friction on the detachment is less than the coefficient of internal friction in the wedge. Stress acting on a wedge is partly a horizontal boundary load caused by the backstop and is partly caused by gravity. If the backstop moves, like in figure B, the wedge thickens so the surface slope increases and the taper phi eventually exceeds phi critical. If the taper angle becomes too large, processes take place within the wedge to cause the surface slope of the wedge to decrease, like in figure C. The wedge slides towards the foreland and new materials added to the toe and extension of the wedge occurs so that the surface slope decreases. In figure D we can see if the surface slope becomes too small, thrusting at the toe stops and the wedge thickens by penetrator strain or out of sequence thrusting in figure E. Internal thickening increases the topographic slope angle until the wedge achieves the critical taper angle again. Then the wedge again starts sliding towards the foreland and new thrusts again form at the toe. For our experiment, we made a simplified model to measure the critical taper. This is similar to the model of Davies and others. Our model consists of four segments. The first is a glass aquarium with a scale bar at the bottom. The section between each red line is one centimeter. Second, a wooden plank used to create a homogeneous force pushed from left to right, creating convergent deformation. Third, we used colored horizontal layers of sand. From bottom to top, these are gray, blue, gray, black, and gray again. This is used to see the internal deformation when creating a convergent deformation zone. And last, we used wooden blocks underneath the right side of the aquarium to increase the slope of beta. We also used some constant factors during our experiment. The thickness of the sand layer is always 3 cm. This is indicated on the glass of the aquarium by a red line. And the reduction in length of the orogeny is always 10 cm, caused by the movement of the wooden plank. In this first experiment, we kept the aquarium horizontal, so that beta is at a 0 degree angle. You can see the internal deformation. Two trusts and one back thrust form in this initial stage of deformation. We decided to not further investigate all the internal thrust angle relations, but focus on the critical taper. In our experiments, beta is the angle of the aquarium with the horizontal table, and alpha is the angle between the horizontal table and the surface slope. This point we're at the 10 cm deformation and we measure the critical taper once more. This table shows the results of the first experiment. The results show an average of 25 degrees for alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is the critical taper. For the second experiment we tilted the aquarium to a 5 degree angle.
For the third experiment, we tilted the aquarium to an angle of 10 cm. These are the results of the third experiment. The average angle of alpha plus beta lies around 22 degrees. For the fourth experiment, we tilted the aquarium to an angle of 20 degrees. These are the results of the fourth experiment. You can see alpha has decreased a lot and alpha plus beta is slightly higher than with the previous experiments. For the fifth and final experiment we tilted the aquarium to an extreme angle of 30 degrees. These are the results of the fifth experiment. Alpha now becomes negative and alpha plus beta averages at 27 degrees. Conclusion. In this figure we will see all the results of alpha and beta compared to each other. The trend line shows an almost linear relation with the negative slope. This means alpha decreases if beta increases. We also see alpha can be negative, but that's because alpha is measured with the horizontal. The next figure shows an almost consistent phi, which remains between 18 and 29 degrees, and the average is about 24.5 degrees. The reason why phi is higher compared to natural rocks is because there's a zeroed fluid pressure and the internal strength is much stronger than the sliding friction. Overall, we'll see the wedge evolves and grows by maintaining a dynamic equilibrium between addition of new material at the toe of the wedge, which decreases the surface slope, internal deformation within the wedge, which increases the surface slope, and thinning of the wedge due to extensional deformation. In reality, also erosion of the wedge plays an important role. The used setup is the result of experimenting in the lab. This setup might have some implications on the measurements we have not yet encountered. Alpha and beta are measured from pictures that do not all have the same frame. This might also have implications on the accuracy of the measurements. Our backstop was pushed by hand, which makes it also impossible to create a homogeneous force on the wedge. This might have a small influence on the angle of a small scale experiment, but could be taken into account for further research. 
The moment of the critical taper is the moment of a new detachment forms. The new detachment leads to a decrease of the taper, which will build up again till it has its critical again. This means the moment of measuring the taper is of great influence. 